Hey everyone. Last week I did a Facebook Live for one of my um, Facebook groups, and there was a segment of that talk um, which was prompted by um, a student's question that I wanted to share with um, all of you here. I think it was a useful discussion about creativity and design and um, just feeling intimidated by, um, sometimes by other work, work by um, other people that we really love and just feeling like we're stuck and not able to get started. So. This particular discussion um, was a little uh, kind of a kick in the pants for me, and I thought maybe it would be interesting for you also. Take a listen. So Patricia asked, I have a general philosophical question. I continue to suffer from feeling so flabbergasted by other people's work that it's difficult to die forward with designing, weaving my own. How the heck to overcome that? That is a fantastic question, and I'm just going to say that I often feel the same way, Patricia. I um, I love, um, one of the reasons I try to go to every American Tapestry Biennial is not because I think that shows that only show tapestry are um, the best shows. I don't think they are. I think the best art shows probably are mixed um, in terms of what media are shown. But I go to the biennials because I want to study those tapestries. And I do sometimes leave feeling overwhelmed because um, there are a lot of um, people out there just making really amazing things. Um, and sometimes it's hard to feel like you can measure up. So the first thing I try to remember is you don't have to measure up. You are your own artist. And um, trying to um, not have that big swig of complete, compare schlager, um, comparing ourselves to other people is not always a good thing to do. And I think we have to really focus on our own process. I've read about artists who just don't use social media because they don't want to see what other people are doing. They want to focus on their own process. And I think there's something to that, that we can get really overwhelmed by feeling like we're never going to measure up. And that's not a fair thing to do to ourselves, especially, um, you know, when we're, we're learning, we're all learning all the time. And it's just a process of continuing your own, finding your own path and continuing to follow it. And that doesn't mean that the path won't branch, um, that you won't maybe work on things that are wildly different um, in subject matter or even in different mediums. But um, just continuing to work, I think the thing about um, making sure that you just keep weaving is is the first thing and that gets hard if you start to feel um, like you don't have anything to weave. It's easy to get stuck and that's the reason I'm doing the design classes because I feel like it's easy to hit that wall where you feel like I don't have any ideas and every idea I have isn't good enough and that kind of thing is hard to overcome. So the, the remedy in my mind is to actually work. Um, and I am saying that for myself as well as for all of you, that the remedy to this stuck place is to go to your studio or go pull out your looms, whatever your studio is, um, your kitchen table or your couch, and weave something every day. Um, Tommy, I said this earlier in this thing, Tommy Scanlon said to me, weave every darn day. Um, I don't yet do that myself, and that is a goal of mine. Um, maybe that'll be my 20. 20 um, resolution is to weave every darn day. I'll, 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 uh, that'll be the first thing I weave is a tapestry that says weave every darn day tapestry, uh, Tommy Scanlon. Um, even if you weave, Archie Brennan talks about this too. Even if you just weave, um, you know, notes from, you know, weave a word or weave um, a doodle that you did on the edge of a napkin or it doesn't matter what you weave, just keep weaving. Um, so yeah, that's my, I think it's important to look at what other people are doing because you can learn so much. Um, I remember going to one of the tapestry biennials that Jennifer Sargent had a piece in that had just completely different structures in the weaving. Um, she was manipulating the warp and weft in ways that are not traditional for tapestry and it was so gorgeous and I just was, it was overwhelming to see that piece in person and you didn't understand that from the photograph in the catalog. I think it's important to, to expose yourself to that 
um, seeing that in person, but um, then to step back and stop comparing ourselves to others. That's probably all you want to hear about that. I hope it's a good start, though. Um, thanks, Patricia. Yeah, social media brings more amazing pieces to our eyes daily. It's just too much. I'll focus on being my own artist, but it's very challenging to find your own path, right? I mean, I think probably a lot of us feel that way, that it, there are, are, I haven't actually done this, but there are moments where I feel like I need to not look at social media for a while because I feel um, it, it does sometimes make me feel overwhelmed. I think taking a break sometimes is good. I feel like it's, as a teacher, I really want to see what people are doing. So even this page where you guys, your weaving is wonderful. There are so many things I see all the time that are like, wow, that's really amazing. And so um, I think it's good to see that kind of stuff, but it's also, um, it, it can start to feel like, oh, I'm not going to measure up. So we have to figure out in our own minds how to work with that. And also remember that um, you guys are badasses and you can do this. So it's not it's not, I think as women, especially not everyone here is a woman, but as women, we are trained, especially those of us, I'm a generation X kind of person, my generation and older, we were freaking trained to um, be humble, to be not believe in ourselves and not, um, not have confidence. And so what I'm saying is have some confidence and just keep weaving and you will gain confidence and it will come, but you have to do the work. And Martina says the same thing too. Like this happens to me too. Like you don't do anything because you're so frozen. You don't know which way to go. So that's part of why I kind of latched onto that tapestry diary thing that Tommy Scanlon um, does so well, because I feel like it's just gets ingrained. I do this every day. It doesn't matter what it is. I just weave every day. And um, I think that helps get past this indecision about, well, I don't want to, it takes so long to weave something. I don't want to do that because then it's a waste of time if it doesn't turn out. Well, if you weave every day, you're going to weave something. Eventually it's going to be something and um, you'll be weaving a lot more. So it doesn't matter if some of it isn't that great. I weave plenty of stuff that's stuffed in a cabinet over there that I'll never show anybody. So, um, and then I show people a lot of stuff that I don't really like because I want you to know that I weave a lot of stuff that's kind of crap. Huh, that's an interesting comment. Sue said, I think it's helpful to limit my takeaways when something is beautifully affecting. One technique, one subject, take notes. I think that that's a good, um, a good comment, Sue. I think that it's helpful to also look at something and actually have a takeaway. Like think about, this is part of why I bring a notebook when I go to the American Tapestry Biennials and I look at a piece I try to go at a time when there aren't people there so that I could spend three or four hours looking at this show, which usually has about 40 tapestries in it. And I will take pictures of the pieces if they'll let me, but then I'll stand there and I'll make notes about stuff. Why do I like this piece? What is it the forms in it? Is the colors or the values or the technique or what is it that, and maybe like Sue's saying, maybe it's just figure out the one thing that is affecting you about the piece and make a note about that and that um, that can be a good way to start to learn what you love where you want to go with something and what you can do in your own work that is a great great comment Sue thank you Jean says weave in your head if you can't make it to the loom I think that that is also very useful Think about the weaving if today is not a day you have a loom or you're working or you can't get there or you're taking care of your grandkids or you're driving or whatever. Um, just keep weaving if Dory the fish wove tapestry. Yep, Lisa Ann. <laughs> That's about it. Um, Nancy says she weaves lots of samples. Sometimes they turn out to be something more. I actually, I'll say this again. I think I said it earlier. Having in your head that what you're weaving right now is a sample is a way to get past some of that. If you just believe when you start that it doesn't have to be something you're going to show anyone, you'll be less inhibited. So some, that works for some people. It doesn't work for everybody. But if you can think, oh, this is a sample. I'm doing it for myself. I'm just doing it to learn something. Then you maybe won't be quite so 
have so much indecision about um, a, a particular element or something. The things that make us freeze up about stuff. Um, yeah. And Anne Marie says, and you may not like it, but someone else might. I just sold a weaving I don't especially like. That has happened to me over and over that I have sold things that I thought were just, I just did not like them at all. I didn't want to bring them to the gallery or put them on my website and they sold. And you never know what someone is going to like. I think we have really harsh opinions about our own work and um, it doesn't have to be that way. I think that we should go easier on ourselves to start with, but just remember that other people are going to love things that you don't like. You could do a poll sometimes, show someone some of the work that you've made, photos or the actual piece, and see which ones they like the most. And a lot of people will not pick the one that you like the most. So just remember that. All right, you all. Well, that was fun. Um, thanks for all your questions and um, talking about important stuff. And I will continue to work hard on the design class. I feel bad about the delay. Um, I've been talking about this class for over a year probably and um, my superwoman complex is um, I think I can do so much that I just I was I've never been so tired in my life as I was a few weeks ago and so I decided to um, back off a little bit and take care of myself for a little bit. And so I am now excited about it again and it will happen. Um, and I will let you all know first when it is coming. Um, have a great, I was gonna say weekend, but it's only Wednesday. Um, have a great week and I will um, do another one of these things soon. Thanks you guys. If I do a tapestry that says that thing from Tommy Scanlon, I'll show you guys first. <laughs>